Back on Morning Drive, and well, it is quite simply one of the greatest putts in golf history. Justin Leonard, 1999 Ryder Cup, nearly 50 feet away for birdie to clinch the cup for the United States, down 10-6 to start Sunday singles. In it went, mayhem ensued, and Justin Leonard, a hero for the ages, and our colleague kind enough to join us this morning. We hope you're doing well, and your family too, and we'll get to that moment in just a little bit, Justin, I want to start with the news from the PJ Tour last week, this revamped schedule. What was your initial reaction to it? Well, my initial reaction is that it's it's optimistic, uh, but I think it's it's certainly plausible. Uh, the fact that Jay Monahan to to work with the USGA, the RNA, the Masters to to find open dates for for those events, and then to work with each individual tournament. You know, each individual tournament is its own entity. Uh, they've got a, a full staff to, to help run the event. Um, and so all the phone calls, all the things that had to take place to, to provide this schedule, um, you know, it's really, it kind of mirrors what we're doing in society right now is, is doing what's best for each other. And I really feel like the, the tournament directors of the, each tournament, even the ones that, that aren't gonna be on the schedule for this year, or in the fall, such as the, the Greenbrier. Um, they're all doing what's best for the game of golf for the PGA Tour. Uh, and I think there's been a lot of unselfish uh, acts from these tournaments to, to try and provide uh, the golfing public with something to really look forward to. But how about the players themselves, Justin? You guys are independent contractors and fiercely independent at that, how amenable will the players be to COVID-19 testing and all these parameters to ensure a smooth return? I think players are, are, are going to welcome uh, anything they need to do in order to provide golf, to get back out on the golf course, to provide some relief for uh, you know the areas that they're playing in, for our television audience. Um, and so I think back to Rory McIlroy, back at the Players' Championship on, on that Thursday, March 12th, when, when he said, um, you know, everybody should be tested. I, I think guys aren't going to have any issues with, with being tested um, to try and provide the, the safest atmosphere possible so that the PGA Tour can return to action. Well, as we all wait for golf's return, there's plenty of great golf to watch uh, on golf today. In fact, golf's greatest rounds, 1999, the comeback at Brookline. I want to ask you, you know, you're down 10-6 going into Sunday, and the planet has basically said it's over. They've ruled an American comeback out. What was the vibe like amongst the team? Yeah, the, the vibe on Saturday night wasn't great until Ben Crenshaw sat in that media center and said, I'm going to leave you with one thought. I've got a good feeling about this, and that's all I'm going to say. Um, at first, you know, I was sitting with Davis Love. We were watching, and we looked at each other and thought, okay, Ben's lost it. He's completely nuts at this point. Um, but then as the pairings rolled out, uh, you know, we decided to, to front load our lineup because we had to. When I say we, it was, you know, Ben Crenshaw, the assistant captains, it was guys like Davis Love, Phil Mickelson, Hal Sutton, Tiger Woods uh, that were there right in the middle of it. Um, we put our best players out first. Uh, and a surprise from Mark James was that he had three players that hadn't played a match as of yet. Uh, and they were out in those first five or six matches. And so uh, we really felt like the pairings went our way. And it was certainly possible. And I'll tell you a story on Sunday morning, I was at the golf course. I was in match nine or 10. So later in the wave, Phil Mickelson, who was playing great, was out early. And I was eating breakfast. Phil sat down. He'd already eaten. Uh, and I kind of looked at my watch and thought, wow, he's he's got to go warm up here pretty soon. He tees off in like 35 minutes. And so I, I looked over at him and go, are you going to hit balls? Or are you just going straight to the tee today? He looked at me and said, I'm not going out to the range until I know we can win. It was dead quiet for like three or four minutes. Wow. He didn't get up. He didn't get up and say good luck. He didn't say play well. He just got up and left. And right then and there, I knew that uh, it was game on. So many 
incredible stories from that week, and especially on that Sunday. You know, I spoke to Sir Nick Faldo about a putt he had in 1989 to beat Scott Hoke uh, at the Masters. He said a 25-foot putt. As soon as he hit it, it was the purest putt he ever hit. How soon did you know on that 17th green from 50 feet away in your singles match against Jose Maria Olathabal that you'd hit the perfect putt? Well, it wasn't until it got a little closer to the hole. It left a scorch mark right there going up the hill. Uh, and so I started to back up because the putt broke about three feet to the right. I was backing up to see if it was going to hit the center of the hole because I knew that was the only way it was going to stay in the hole. Otherwise, that ball was going to go five or six feet by. So it, I knew it was on a good line. It was just a matter of, of if it hit the dead center of the hole was the only way it was going to stay in. Well, you have so many memories from the week. You told us a great anecdote about you and Lefty. The, the uniform on Sunday was quite a talking point. What have you done with it? Well, I've actually still got the shirt right here. And if you, you know, the shirt has a lot of meaning to it. Um, these are portraits from all the winning Ryder Cup teams previous to our team in 99. And, and quite honestly, this is probably something you're more likely to find like a slip cover in your grandma's, you know, favorite chair. Um, but it, it was, even though it was, you know, not pretty to look at, this shirt had a lot of meaning. And so I, I keep it pretty close. Well, history might have looked upon uh, that outfit a lot differently had the Americans lost. You had a lot to say uh, with that American victory. Justin, we appreciate a few minutes. Stay safe. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Damon. That's Justin Leonard here from the 1999 Ryder Cup. The win at Brookline, a reminder of golf's greatest rounds. You can watch it tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern. The Ryder Cup at Brookline, only on golf.